Great to have you back. And what we will learn in this lesson are the various terms that will get used in the next few lessons. So wake up, get a cup of coffee and activate all your senses. So consider the same spring mass system and let us say it moves a distance a meters to the right before it starts moving back towards the equilibrium position. So this is the maximum distance the mass moves to the right and is called the amplitude, often denoted by the symbol a and is always a positive quantity. Well, you might say that the mass moves to the left as well to minus a. However, minus a is its position. Its magnitude of displacement is still a. So you can see that the range of motion of this mass is 2a. Also, you'd observe that 2a covers half the cycle. One complete trip or cycle is from a to minus a and then back to a. So the next term we need to understand is the time period t, which is nothing but the time taken to complete one cycle. So when the mass moves from right to left and comes back to its original position, then the time so taken is the time period of the oscillation, or you can say time taken to do one cycle. So here, this is the time taken to complete one vibration. Well, it was pretty fast. So let us slow it down. So it starts at, we can see T equal to 57.225 seconds. And if you wait enough, ends at t equal to 59.725 seconds. So the time period t is equal to 59.725 minus 57.225, which is equal to 2.5 seconds. So the next term that we need to work around is frequency f of the vibrations. Well, it's quite simple. It is the number of cycles completed in one second. So let us see how many cycles happen in one second here. Well, that was fast again. So let us slow it down and you'll see at time t equal to 262.800 seconds, we release the spring and we will find how many vibrations happen in one second. That is when the time elapsed is 262.800, that's when it started plus one second or at 263.800 seconds. So let's see, you'll find that the mass has moved about 5.5 cycles in one second. So the frequency of this vibration is 5.5 hertz, where hertz is the unit of frequency. So if you're told that this mass is doing 70 cycles in 10 seconds, we can calculate the frequency by saying that, well, if in 10 seconds, 70 cycles are completed, how many cycles are done in one second? And we find that it is nothing but 70 cycles per 10 seconds or seven cycles per second or seven hertz, which is a frequency. So we say the frequency is seven hertz. Now, if you ask what is the time period of this mass that is doing 70 cycles in 10 seconds, we can say that the time taken to complete one cycle, which is the time period, is 10 seconds upon 70 cycles. Or if you calculate this, it comes to something like 0 0.143 seconds per cycle. So that is the time period. So you would have noticed that the relationship between frequency and time period is reciprocal or f is equal to 1 upon t or we could also say that t is equal to 1 upon f. Okay, now let us move on to something more conceptual that may be a little confusing but stay with me 
and I'll try to make it simple for you. So what if we were to say that one cycle of movement is equivalent to the motion of this mass if it were moved through a circle? In a way, we are saying that a cyclical event like movement of this mass can be represented by a unit circle. Remember, the mass is moving in one dimension only, that is back and forth. But we're trying to draw a parallel of this back and forth motion in terms of circular motion. Okay, it might sound confusing. So let us consider this setup where the mass is at extreme right position and the same mass is represented on a circle by this dot. You see this tiny little dot, uh, please keep an eye on it, it's, it's quite small. So when the mass is at extreme right position, the dot is at this position. And as the mass starts moving to the left, the dot which represents the mass starts moving in a circle. So you see both the mass and the dot on the circle have started moving. Let us watch this mass complete one cycle and see what angle does a dot cover. So you see half a circle has been covered and the mass has moved half a cycle that is from A to minus A. So what we see is that when the mass completes one cycle, the dot completes one circle or two pi radians. Remember one circular motion is two pi radians. So if the mass completed two cycles and let us watch it complete two cycles. And there you can see that the mass has covered another cycle and the dot has moved through another circle or another 2 pi radians. So what we see that the dot covered 2 pi multiplied by 2 or 4 pi radians. Likewise, 3 cycles, if the mass had done 3 cycles, 3 cycles would equal to 3 circular movements of this dot or 2 pi into 3 or 6 pi radians. So what you've done here is found the equivalent of linear motion of this mass in terms of angular momentum of the dot and measured in radians. And we say that every cycle is equal to 2 pi radians of angular movement. So with this understanding, we can say that if the frequency of the mass is f cycles per second, the radian equivalent would be 2 pi multiplied by f or 2 pi f radians. Now, since frequency is in cycles per second, we can say that in one second, the equivalent angular movement is 2 pi f. And this is therefore called the angular frequency denoted by the symbol omega and its units are radians per second. Well, we could have also arrived at this by saying that 2 pi radians are covered in t seconds because 2 pi radians is equal to 1 cycle and 1 cycle takes t seconds. Therefore, the angular velocity omega is equal to 2 pi upon t. And we've learned earlier that 1 upon t is nothing but f. So this equals 2 pi f. So what we've done is found equivalent term for frequency f in terms of angular frequency omega. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos.